right. Why don't we go ahead and open up the public hearing. Um, we would typically do the minutes first, but since um, like Maria to be here to vote on last week's, um, or sorry, last month's minutes. And then I think she was here for the prior month as well. So that would be, um, we should get her on board to probably approve those as well. That being said, we've got a couple of continuations. Just pulling up our package here. So the first gentleman I have not heard anything from. And um, I did the call 30, 340 Bain Street, Kathy. Yes. And um, Jose for the second one, he um, is feeling under the weather and he asked if we could continue it another time. Of course, that is fine with me. So let's um, continue that to next month. While we're at it, we should look find a date for next month. What's that second Thursday look like? I have one too. That would be the 14th. So as of the 15th of July, I think after that, it's um, in person meeting. Whether they're going to allow us to do a hybrid, I'm not sure. So if we so do the 14th, 14th, works for us to do virtual. Perfect. Let's let's do that. If there's not a conflict with um, any of the board members. Bob and Vincent, does that work for you? Just a moment. Of course. What's the date again? The 14th of July, it's that second Thursday. No, that's fine. Yep. It's, and uh, Kathy, with regard to um, the vir going from virtual to live, which is understandable, um, I'd like to recommend commencing that after Labor Day. Only because um, it's, I don't know how busy the agenda will be in August, but I think uh, everybody given possibility of either something presenting that you could still join remotely, you know, even if you're on vacation and you just wanted uh, that kind of thing. I think it, that flexibility would serve us well for August and just request that we go live after everybody quote unquote is resettled into their routine after the, um, after the holiday, Labor Day holiday. So for the September meeting or even October going forward, that would just be my suggestion. I like it. Sounds brilliant to me. I will pass that along to the powers of the. <laughs> and um, you know, in the meantime, we can just double check if they, what the allowance is from the state in terms of still doing remote just to make sure that we can do that for. Sure, certainly. I know August. I know we can. Um, I think we as a board need to vote. Well, I'd be happy to make a motion that we um, continue to have a remote hearing for this July and August. Second. All in favor? Barbara and I. Ben Raguchi, aye. Jennifer, aye. All right. We're remote for July and August, and um, would be very, very, potentially very exciting to see people live. <laughs> 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 we can back in, our, in uh, September. I haven't done, haven't been in town hall for a meeting in a long time. I, I will say a number of the towns that um, I'm in front of, they uh, have returned to in-person meetings and it's like, what? We have to drive to find you now and commute? It's a, uh, there is a certain, definitely advantages of being able to do this remote. We, you lose some of the collegiality of 
um, which is the downside, but it is it's more efficient. All right, so um, like to make a motion to continue the public hearing for 340 Main Street till uh, July 14th. And there's two of those um, virtual public uh, hearings for 340. So let's continue both of those. Do we have a second on that? Second. All in favor? Uh, Bob Breen, aye. Vin Raguchi, aye. Platt, aye. All right, we'll bump those to next month. And I would suggest that Kathy, if you're going to uh, reach out to um, Mr. Say in particular, because his request was, um, uh, we'll call it medical or whatever, he might know what the, the status of Mr. Laws is. As far as I know from the last meeting, Mr. Laws has not been in contact with him either. There have been a, a lot of um, um, possible tenants that have come in to talk with Jerry as to whether they could go in there, but I don't know the status of that. Well, that being the case, I'd just like to point out and maybe have an understanding that uh, if Mr. Laws, for that purpose, the special use permit for detail and auto repair uh, wasn't to repair without explanation otherwise from party or otherwise that um, the, the application should be formally I don't know, would it be dismissed or denied? I, I, without hearing, I don't think he can deny it, but it should be, this is the second time over for him. And it doesn't seem as if he's making any effort to um, uh, maintain um, outreach to the board. I agree, Bob. Um, and I think once we have, when we have the owner in front of us next month, um, hopefully we can get an update across the board on this and then we can take this I resolve it one way or the other, just so it's not continuing on the agenda. Um, I agree. I agree that we've been, <laughs> there's no need to continue to kick it down the road forever, but it's, so we can close that one out next month. The next thing we have is for 172 Park Street, which is the Bank of America building. So uh, we have a continued virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, June 9th, 2022. It's a petition of Gensler representative for Fleet Boston CD number 88322, 172 Park Street, North Reading, MA, map 54, parcel 136 for a variance from article 200-87C, subsection 11A, environmental performance regulations of the North Reading zoning bylaws for upgrade lighting to meet ALMGL chapter 167B, section three. And we received from the applicant a letter from Bowler Engineering, um, which is in the, in the file. Do we have someone from the applicant or bowler here today who can give us a? Yes, hi, this is Amanda Johnson. I am uh, representing the bank. I'm here with Gensler. And good evening, this is Austin Turner from Bowler. We're the civil engineering consultant working with the applicant. Perfect, thank you. We do have your report in hand, but uh, if you could just give us a quick summary of your findings, that would be very helpful to. Yeah, absolutely. So I know um, we were in front of the board last month and presenting kind of an updated and frankly modernized lighting plan. And at the board's request, we had put together a letter which provided some context and an additional summary of our review of the applicant's updated lighting plan and providing some additional detail with respect to our thoughts on the appropriateness of that lighting plan, how it relates to what we're accustomed to seeing for industry standards and, and guidelines related to these specific kinds of lighting. And as by way of background or a quick background, <clears throat> Bowler, we're a civil engineering and land development consultants. We're accustomed to doing and frequently design lighting plans for land development projects, very similar to this. So we have a lot of experience 
we work with lighting consultants. We do it ourselves on, on exterior lighting. So we're very familiar. And we did look at the, the lighting plan the applicant had prepared, which is labeled as you know version three, which is reflective of the feedback the board had provided at last month's discussion. What we found as, as kind of an over generalization was the lighting levels from the previous version were reduced by approximately 50%. And, and frankly, uh, it's probably a bit more appropriate for, for this kind of situation in this particular location. Um, with respect to the variance request, the, the ordinance requires that a variance be sought or, variant or relief be granted if the lighting levels are calculated to exceed uh, one foot candle over the property boundary into a public right of way. In this instance, um, and I can bring up the plan if it's helpful, the, the lighting levels are calculated, so I'll show you right here, rather than you speculate what I'm talking about, I'll bring the screen up real quick here. <clears throat> We'll say the, the diagrams that came through to us in our package. Um, I could read your letter, but the specifics of the plan would the, the just the, the that, did that come up okay for you guys? Clear enough to read. Yes. Okay. So you're looking at the lighting plan now? Yes. We okay. See it. So this this plan here, this is the updated version, just by way of a kind of a quick refresher. This was the prior version. And really the area we're focusing on is at the top of the screen, that's the public right away. And you can see the lighting levels on last month's version were calculated to be above two and in some cases above three, where the ordinance requires at being one or lower, all right? So this is the updated version and the changes is really, some of these light poles were moved a bit further interior to the property. The fixture heads were changed, they're gonna be LED lighting, which affords them to be far more directional. They're dark sky compliant, and you're not gonna get the up glow, and, and the lighting is, is far more concentrated and focused on the immediate point at the fixture. So you can see right here, we do have uh, some cases where the lighting levels are just above one, and you can see at this driveway, they've come down significantly, but still 1.2, 1.3 at those locations. Now, when you're looking for just some context in terms of what I'm accustomed to doing, what industry standard expectations are, we like to have lighting levels and the industry, frankly, suggests that you have lighting levels at these ranges at driveway intersections to provide adequate in what is believed to be appropriate illumination for these locations. What that requires is when you have this, you know, this hard interface, if you will, with a right-of-way boundary, there is expected to be just some limited bleed, if you will, over that boundary. You can see it rapidly diminishes into that right-of-way boundary, but you are going to get just this little brief bubble of lighting, which may extend just beyond the right-of-way boundary, which is just associated with some of the, the fading, if you will, of these lights at those locations. So that's a very brief overview. And what we're asking of the board is for relief from that specific requirement, specifically for these, these locations here. And then you can kind of see along these property boundaries where there are two commercial uses, immediately, or the post office and then another uh, banking institution immediately to our left or right. We do also have a little bit of you know, spread beyond that boundary, but it does also rapidly diminish there. And we've reduced the lighting levels significantly interior to the property to what's more appropriate and expected um, in the industry. And that, that's a lot, I threw a lot out there, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that uh, you might have. Do we have anything, remind me, um, Austin, that shows, or can you describe what the, the current lighting levels are? Certainly could have, yeah, and I can do, probably picture is probably better, right? So I, I'm gonna drop the magic Google man on the screen here. But what what's out there right now is kind of, <clears throat> by today's standards, a bit archaic and perhaps kind of, caveman style lighting, which is really pole mounted floodlights. And they're not directional. They're just this big blast of sunburst lighting. They're very high up on the pole and it really just, just kind of illuminates the entire property. And frankly, you're gonna get a lot more spread from that fixture than you would with these kind of focalized, focused LED lighting fixtures. But this site is illuminated by, illuminated by a handful of these floodlights and then some kind of garish underlighting on the canopy, and that's all proposed to be removed with some kind of modernized lighting. So, so the floodlights 
are going away. And then from my look at the plan, it looks like four new pole lights are going in, but closer to the building. Correct, yeah. So if you go back to the plan, what you can see here is we've got a, a light pole kind of tucked into this corner with a couple of LED heads that are focused and kind of very directional. Another one that's very much interior to the property. And then one pole with two fixtures on each located into the rear to just give some appropriate light, light levels to the rear of the property. And then under the canopy, they're replacing kind of the old lighting with some one wall pack and a couple of kind of um, under canopy lights that are very focused. You can see the lighting levels underneath them. You get this you know, immediate lighting level, but then the diminishing of that light is very rapid because they create this circle immediately underneath them. This is the area of focus predominantly because this is where the ATM is gonna be. So there's a security level lighting that wants to be achieved underneath there. Are those on 20, essentially 24 seven when it starts? Is it yeah, they, they'll drop the, the ATM and the drive up will be on, correct. And then the lighting in the in the parking lot usually drops to what we're accustomed for, for security level lighting just to maintain some level of illumination in the property, um, usually after close, but the under the canopy lights will remain on. Um, so if people were there after hours or for some reason needed to access the ATM later. Bob and Vin, questions? thoughts so in the in the past conversations we had there was i raised the concern that um while it isn't residential um i was just concerned about uh i think you describe it almost as the bubble the glare the um that would might occur in the evening uh particularly if you were across the street during an evening sporting event and have to wonder if there was going to be some overflow glare as you were because the stands in the high school um, field face the street as opposed to being the back um, and interesting you know it's a nice effect but sometimes I wonder but um, admittedly I was in the stands uh, watching something a week ago and I have a meeting Bank of America isn't exactly on directly you know it's off to the left but notwithstanding um, you know that was that was one of the concerns I raised and um, I know you're going to you'll probably address that in a moment. My only other question was, is there any possibility of putting um, the, um, the lighting uh, on sensor? Um, and I was curious if there was some, if there was a reason because, oh, maybe um, you, if you might, maybe we should do these in, in, in sequence. What, uh, do you have any opinion to offer with regard to the halo effect or the bubble effect that you noted with regard to late night, if they're going to be pretty much continuous in their um, illumination. Sure. And so what, so what I, what I meant by bubble was more of the, the expected level of, you know, of spread, so to speak, the, the glare that you're referring to is more, you know, as, as we look at it from when we're designing lighting is more, you know, the appearance of that light, like, so that, that giant floodlight, that thing's going to be obnoxious. So you're going to look at it and you're going to get sunspots in your eyes because it's so bright, right? So the, the pole mounted fixtures that, that we're proposing here look you know, similar to, to these. And to give you some effect, those are very, very directional. And if you were sitting in the stands across the street, for example, you're not going to be looking directly at the fixture. It's very much downward. And there's a strong, sharp cutoff angle for, for that lighting. So you'll see illumination on the ground but you're not going to be looking directly at the fixture or the, the actual light itself. So you'll see illumination on the ground, but you're not gonna get that big glare factor when you're looking at kind of that. What do you want? That big, sorry, this is so, background noise. So combination of the, the fixture design and um, oh, no. the fact that it's going to LED will make it a more directed and focused light and not have that, um, that halo glow uh, glare, whatever, um, that seems to exist with existing, um, lights. Yes, lights. sir. That, that's correct. And, and these, you know, when they're called dark sky, it's because they have sharp cutoff. So you don't get the up glow. It's very directional and concentrated and focused. Um, 
With respect to your second question, you were asking if they could be put on some kind of sensor, I'm assuming like a motion sensor or something. Well, uh, with, and I, please correct me if my memory uh, isn't serving, but um, you know, there was this, there was a thought that was put forward by the bank that, you know, this is going to increase lighting, that it's going to create a, a greater sense of a, a security interest for the, um, for the property and in, quote unquote, the surrounding area. And while that has merit uh, inherently, um, it, it, the thought that, you know, the only people that are going to be accessing the, the bank by and large in the evening are either going to be in a car. And I'm not to say that a car couldn't be, you know, uh, fall prey to a, you know, a theft um, or people walking up to use the ATM. And even that, I mean, no offense, but the, the district isn't, there isn't a lot of business that's open. So anybody, quite frankly, that's going to Bank of America at in the late evening, let's say even after nine, chances are they're not walking up, they're driving up. So I, while I appreciate the thought that there was merit to increasing the lighting because it'll just be safer for everybody, um, that was counter, that I, I, I wasn't swayed as much by the thought that it was going to create this different lighting effect that would just brighten the property and create an over, uh, just an imbalance along the street. Now, uh, without getting any more tangential than I may have already, you know, you're gonna be putting an LED. Um, uh, the bank to the left of the post office probably won't. So there's just, you're going to be different inherently, um, mm -hmm. regardless of the directional of the fixture. <clears throat> so that, you know, we're not trying to stop, um, progress. I mean, hey, you know, an LED is a better bulb, right? Um, but at the same time, um, to me, the, the question of customer safety, as opposed to creating a, a, a brighter identity for Bank of America, for lack of a better idea of it, just being a more outstandingly lit area to, if from dusk until dawn and it just stands out because it's just so brightly lit seems to suggest to me more of an effort to um no maybe the wrong word advertise bank of america as opposed to what it you know when if you put sensor lights in then they would just get brighter when somebody walks up but maybe that can't be achieved with i'm not an illumin i don't have any background in lighting but so i I, have, I, have, I can appreciate where you're coming from and I, and I i understand i understand that concern to to that end if if the sole purpose of this and it's not the purpose of this but if let's assume for a second that it was was to simply just rebrand the property and have it be some kind of glowing orb amongst the others I wouldn't be putting any lights behind it because nobody's going to see it anyway, right? I'd want to. I'd want this thing to be super bright. And frankly, if I wanted this to be kind of standing out, I'd have lighting levels that were far higher than this. And, and really, the intent. I'm not dismissing what you're saying, but as, as kind of like a counterpoint, really, what we're trying to achieve is appropriate security level lighting under the ATM. That's a big focus, obviously, right? Where right now you get big floodlight hot spots and then immediate dark spots. You get deep shadows and you get this surface of the sun bright spot in the front of the property. That floodlight is probably gonna do a far better job of branding this property where the LED lights are much more uniform and far more even. And it's not gonna seem nearly as bright because of how those things are structured and, and put together. Really what we wanna do is get an appropriate level of lighting under the canopy where it doesn't exist today frankly improve the lighting at the intersections because they're in deep shadows with some of those spotlights they just create this sharp sharp distinct cutoff in lighting levels and we're we're just nudging above one barely as you get to those driveway intersections so we're not creating a Las vegas style look here it's it's gonna be a much more softer and even distribution of light and more appropriate at the intersections frankly What's interesting about this proposal, and I'm, I'm quite frankly, I mean, I'm heartened by the, um, by the additional information being put forward tonight. That being, 
a more focused fixture as well as um, the effect of the LED and the placement. So I'm just trying to be um, as comprehensive in the review. What's interesting about a proposal like this is, is that it's one of those things where you may not know until it's completed. And it, let's just, just from my, um, and I, I don't think anybody wants to keep chasing any interest down and telling them, well, can you make it just a little bit brighter or just a little bit darker? I don't think that's practical and I don't think that's, that's um, the point of this. But in the event that it just is imbalanced to a, for whatever reason, may it be aesthetic or practical for the community at large, um, you know, do you have the ability with these fixtures to diminish the lighting, whether it's, a, you know, a slight percentage to even it out? Or is this just, if you put this fixture in with this illumination level, that's it. And if you wanted to change it, you have to take and replace the entire fixture. Is it no, much like a, a lamp yeah. where you can just change the level of the bulb? <laughs> no, that's a great question. So the old lighting was simply bulb in, bulb out. You get what you get, right? With with the new lighting, particularly these LED fixtures, there is some level of customization that you can do. You you have you have the ability to a certain extent to change the angle of the lighting. You have the ability to a certain extent to perhaps throttle up or down the intensity. It's not infinitely customizable, but there is some level of customization that can be achieved with the fixtures is how I understand it. And in particular, speaking with this lighting designer. So to your point, if, if somebody were out here one night, a month, two months, three months later after they were complete and something didn't feel right or look right, there is an opportunity, I believe, to refine that, so to speak. That's, that is helpful to know. Do you have, um, do you also have to take this in front of the CPC? Remind me for- um... That's not my understanding. They asked us to appear with you obviously because the way the lighting was currently calculated, we were expecting that slight increase above one at the right of way boundary. And I, I very much appreciate you both coming back with a revised plan that is um, more appropriate for the location and also with some you know, additional information so we can actually understand a little bit better sure. given none of us are lighting experts, um, then maybe, um, how this would work. I, I share, Bob's concern that we didn't want this to be a, you know, a floodlights on the building and have it be you know, shining out there, particularly later at night, because kind of, we're just kind of a sleepy little town still. Um, and I do recognize that you, you have made substantial efforts to bring down the lighting levels right at the street boundary, which is very helpful. I have to take a peek back at the bylaw because I know um, we have the limitation on the street side and I need to peek at it to see if it has the same limitations on the sidelines or if it's just up that right away. I think it was, I think it was section 200.8711. And there's, believe, I'm, I'm just kind of reading here. It says, no lighting shall be permitted that is not installed in a manner that will prevent direct light from shining onto any street or adjacent property. And then the second part of that is that direct or indirect lighting shall not cause a total illumination in excess of one foot candle when measured at any point vertically above the boundary of a residence district or any residential property or right of way line of any public way. Okay, so it's both the right of way and the and the boundaries with the the two abutters, the post office and the other bank, and so we are along the right of way. As you said, it's just we're looking at. Yeah, you can see if it's right up here. Level. You're you have a one point six, one point seven, then it drops, and then you're here. You're one point two, one point three. Okay, and what's our high points on the boundaries? Looks like a two. On the boundaries, let's see, we're with the bank immediately adjacent to us. Looks like so our highest measure level is three. And then um, with the post office, just right here, looks to be about <coughs> 1.3. And another one is kind of common driveway linked between the two properties. There's another 1.3 that's immediately next to that driveway. All right. Um, 
I would say on the on the one hand, I'm, I think it, it totally makes sense to be swapping to the LED. It's more efficient, more more focused. I will say I did drive through the drive through um, number of nights ago at ten o'clock at night to see how it felt, and it didn't feel dark particularly to me. I mean, it's coming up in a car. Um, and I have used that ATM at both the, where you park and go into the booth, um, as well as the drive through at late hours. So existing lighting levels did, were not uncomfortable for me personally. Um, that's sort of something to, to add to the mix there. Ben, do you have some uh, thoughts on this? Just um, a question on the lighting. Um, is is it the three, the four, or the 5,000 K? Good question. Um, because I'm wondering how it matches with the RMLD street lights for the I'm gonna, area. I have, uh, I'm gonna unrotate the plan. <coughs> so Ben, is your concern that it's going to just differentiate the lot? Well, I just don't know. I mean, you know, th there's there's one version of the light that, that tends toward the yellow scale. There's the deep end of the light that heads towards the blue scale. And, um, you know, j just it would be different if it were different than the RMLD um, street shade. You, you, again, you're asking what color lights would be? <laughs> yeah, well, that, that inherently, that's, that's an excellent question, you know, the coloration. But even if it goes to white, you know, the, you know the, an LED white, is or clear or even they're they're just it's it's different you know they 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 just create a different look you could take an led um at a 60 loom and you could take uh you know albert uh edison you know classic old gangster style bulb at 60 and you put them in the same lamp and you put them side by side and it's just going to look different. It's just as I think as Vin is pointing out, it, it, it sways towards more crisp white, which is quite frankly, uh, you know, probably the better, but you've got a, a post office that, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to invest any money in terms of changing their lighting. Uh, the bank uh, to the, on the other side, they might, but possibly not. And then the next uh, property is Ryers, which is on the intersection. And, you know, they're more likely to keep what they have now, which is just that classic soft look. So I think that inherently this property, no matter what the level of lighting is, I think that just by changing over to these new fixtures with, with a, a greater spread focus as it might be, and an LED bulb, it, it's just going to look different. That may not be a bad thing. It may ultimately mean, quite frankly, nothing because it is still a very, it's a commercial area. Um, and after 10 p.m., there's nobody other than the people accessing Bank of America or um, is it Reading Cooperative um, using th those properties. It's just people driving by. So, you know, does it wash out? No pun intended. But at the same time, it's I just it is just going to look different. It's only going to even if because it's always looked this way, right? I mean, that's part of the problem. That's one of the concerns that zoning our our board always has to deal with. With advancements in tech, changes everything is just going to look different, and ultimately things are going to catch up and start to look the same. But I can tell you right now, I don't see the post office updating their lighting in any way just because there's no reason for them and they probably don't have the budget anyway. And secondarily, I don't know what the other bank's interest really would be. So I think the, the question that the board has to all just keep in mind is, you know, do we really, notwithstanding the interest to increase security and safety and eliminate these, these, these black lines, I, 
I understand that for driving purposes, you, I, quite frankly, I, I've seen it and I've experienced it. You just suddenly go from a floodlight area and then it's suddenly just black. It's almost like a, a classic um, um, spot in a rear view mirror. We just can't see anything. And then you do as you move into the next light uh, area, but it's just going to look different. And I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. I'd, I'd welcome anybody's comment, uh, Jerry as well, especially, uh, because he might be able to speak to another area of town where he's seen this. I know they're, you know, especially up on 28 where they've constructed new storage facilities that are accessible. I don't know, they have just a different light look and you just don't think of it because it's all commercial up in that area anyway. Yeah, I would, and I would say, you know, I'm, I'm all for changing these to LED and um, upgrading your lights, but they're very, probably do that with not needing a variant. You can probably, if you were to dial these down a notch, um, because you are very close, particularly on the, on the right of way, but it's higher on the got more bleed going on the abutting property lines. Um, yeah, I would be interested to know if you could implement some of your upgrades that you're interested in and then still keep it below the threshold that the town is seeking for illumination on um, the sidelines. Which is an excellent point. If the idea that the new fixtures and the lighting is just going to create a more um, consistent lighting from fixture to fixture, because I, I know earlier in the presentation, you mentioned that it seems that you almost go from one illuminated fixture and then it's just like a dead black spot because of the old floodlight, quote unquote, and then to you, and you're in your next fixture, which lights up again. Uh, to Chairman's point, Chairperson's point. The idea here is that if you're using better fixtures and the lighting is more um, advanced, then you don't, that'll eliminate those black, or those dead, dead spots, black spots or, or shading. And if the idea is, is that if that creates a more consistent lighting around these areas, maybe the only place where the lighting really truly needs to be increased, if at all, would be at the ATM. And that might be a very focused uh, variance with regard to, and just as long as you can stay within the existing levels for the abutter um, illumination, existing illumination. Is that, am I following what you suggested, Madam Chairperson? Yeah, I, what it was, yeah, I think what it was looking for is, and I, I think I appreciate this proposal and I think it makes sense for the bank to be upgrading and revising its lighting. What I'm not clear is that, you know, you've proposed a, a, a list of fixtures which would have um, a certain level of illumination and um, at the property lines, I would think that there's probably um, variations that you can do. So you have something very similar, but it just brings down the lighting slightly. So you're not at a, a position of needing a variance from this board. Okay, so what's the pleasure of the board? Is it go back to the drawing board? Is it, how, I, I'm happy to proceed however you feel appropriate. I'm, I'm just feel like I'm in a little bit of a purgatory state right now with the request. And I want to make sure I'm proceeding appropriately. Fair enough. Well, and that, that purgatory is... leads us in one direction, either, either heaven or hell. So let's just. That's what, that's, that. Well, yeah. And I feel like I'm trending towards the wrong one right now. <laughs> well, the lighting will be, might be better in there. Uh, it, yeah, it might be a little hot. Before we close out the, the hearing and, and move to take this one way or the other, did we have any other? Um, 
anyone in the audience who wanted to comment or do, uh, Jerry, did you have any additional comments on this? No, I do not. I think, uh, I think your comments are, uh, are accurate, they're real. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Kathy, was there anyone else at, uh, attending for this hearing? I don't know that there are any abutters present and I didn't receive anything from any departments, boards or abutters. Did we get, um, did we get anything from CPC on this? They're not meeting until later this month. So they didn't um, have a chance to bring it before their members. Did they, um, did they remind me, did they have something in the file from one of the prior Meetings. Um, Again, I can't recall. I think all we received was a memo from Jerry. Um, all right. Uh, that being said, I would suggest that we. Rich said, um, Jerry said he's speaking with the police chief and the town planner about this proposal. We did not have any issues as well. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so I would make a motion to close the public hearing on this and then we can move towards our uh, deliberation. Right. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Bob Green, aye. Thanks, aye. Aye. Okay. All right. So I would uh, just to summarize, I would say I, I appreciate that the applicant has um, come back with additional information because we certainly didn't have enough to, to, to understand the proposal at the get go and as well as made some modifications to it. Um, which uh, I, I, I appreciate. I think there's, it does make, I understand, I think it makes sense to be upgrading uh, lighting fixtures. I know that's probably something we've all done you know, at our own homes um, for many of them. Um, but I am so concerned about uh, the, so the lighting bleed going over the, the lot lines as well, particularly, um, so that's that's sort of where I'm falling at the moment. How about um, Bob, Ben? So to me, it, it go it, um, and with all respect to my earlier questioning, I think the point raised by um, the chair is an excellent one, which was, is there really an if the lighting is better, the fixtures are better, it's, I'll, I'll ask it maybe or phrase it if this was what you were trying to approach. Is it possible to, is it possible for the applicant or its engineering to um, keep the lighting levels with regard to the abutters upon those, those lines in the same that it exists now? And um, if, you know, that would, and, and allow for the the focus lighting basically on the front and maybe just at the ATM. I mean, that is, that seems to be, if I, unless I misunderstood uh, the applicant, their big, their prior priority in this is to increase safety of the site in its off hours. How, now, safety can be viewed in a lot of different ways, both public safety and personal safety. That being, you know, are you turning a corner into a darkened area that suddenly you go from bright to dark to bright and there's another car there or something. I don't really believe that this eight, this bank has that kind of a business flow regardless, I, but I don't, I don't monitor it. Um, and I think it's different from the other suggested lots that um, we would, it was recommended to go look at. Um, I know Jerry could speak to the, as I can to the one in Wakefield, which is just 
situated in a totally different um, uh, property um, setup. So, but I think, you know, on a larger, the point I made earlier, I'll, I, I will stand on. It's just going to look different. And for better or for worse, just because I, from my, our, my own common experience, when you put LEDs in, they just look different from the other lights. And, you know, I, I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing, or it's just an inevitability. Maybe, you know, it'll be better. It, it will just serve a greater purpose. But um, I would be open to allowing for the existing levels along the abutters to be maintained and the focused area that being the ATM and even the front lot slightly because it is the public way, but it doesn't seem substantial um, perhaps to be approached or um, attempted uh, in order to resolve the issue. All right. You know, from, from what I'm hearing here, um, Austin and Amanda, um, it, it's, it's sounding like the, the board's inclination is, would not be to, to grant a variance in the, in the form requested. We have closed the public hearing. If you wished, um, I'll give you an option. We can go ahead and vote on this now, or we can, um, Procedurally, I think we can reopen this if you want to submit something else for us to consider a revised plan at a, a subsequent hearing. Um, but I will, I will leave that to the applicant if that is your request. Sure, do you mind if, um, I know the public hearing is technically closed, but do you mind if I ask the question of the chair and the board? Go ahead. So I, my, my inclination, provided the board is comfortable with this and agrees, would be to leave it open for one more meeting. Not that I want this to be like a seven month lighting discussion, but leave it open for one more meeting. Allow us to go back and see if we can refine that further. And, and if you don't mind, I'm gonna ask a question in the form of a statement. I want you to just make sure you confirm what I thought I heard so that I'm doing the right thing. If we can try and refine the lighting levels to what we believe is most similar to lighting at the sidelines, to try and match those levels to the extent that we're able or, or reduce it further if, if such a thing is possible. And then see if there's a way to further tune the lighting in the front and maybe reel that in just a little bit. I think, you know, we were talking about security. I still wanna maintain the lights in that rear parking lot because it is behind the building and it kind of creates this dead spot that I think requires some level of illumination. But I can go back to the, the lighting designer who did this particular facility and see if I can achieve a reduced level at the sideline, if at least to the existing levels, and see if I can get a little bit more uh, focused on the front as well. And I can ask a couple of questions too. Questions that I heard as part of our just general discussion were color, and I can maybe get some clarity on the color or see if there are options on the color. And if there's any way to implement some kind of motion detection device under the canopy so it's not always lit up. I don't know the answer to either of those questions, but I can get clarity on that for the next meeting. Awesome, that would be much appreciated. And um, so I will make a motion to reopen this so you can submit additional documents um, for next month's hearing. That was me jumping the gun on that. Um, so all in favor of reopening so the petitioner can submit a revised plan for final discussion next month. Bob Brain, aye. Vince, you're on mute if you'd, uh, I've got, I got a head nod, but I need a, a, a verbal for the- Ben Raguchi, aye, sorry. <laughs> Terrific, thank you. And Jennifer Platt um, confirmed. So Austin, thank you for um, your patience and your participation. We will look forward to seeing your updated plan we will hopefully be able to wrap this up very quickly at the next meeting and- um, One more procedural thing. Can you formally continue me to the next discussion? Absolutely. And right, thank you. Think I'm making a motion to formally continue until July 14th. All in favor? Again, Bob Brain, aye. Ben Raguchi, aye. All right.
Awesome. We will see you. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you, you all. Um, Jen, before we break with him, um, it sounds like uh, planning is meeting this month. Is there any interest in trying to have them? Or should are they? do they go through us for us? So we should put a request in, Kathy, to planning for them to provide any comments for us in advance of our meeting next month. OK, I believe they're meeting on the 21st. I'll, I'll get a packet to them and ask them to review it. Great, and let them know that we were uh, expecting a um, revised plan. If you would pop an email to the applicant since uh, they've, they've signed off um, mentioning the planning date. So okay. if they can have their revised plan before the 21st, that might be a little tight for them, but if they can, um, that might be helpful for CPC. Okay. All right, thank you and everyone else for their patience. Let's move on. I think we are next on is five Tower Hill Road. Hey guys, can you hear me okay? You can just give us one second. I want to read the hearing notice so we can get this into the officially openness. I'm just scrolling through all of this. Oh, thank you, Kathy, for putting it up. I was still trying to get through, <laughs> <laughs> through all the filings. All right, the public hearing will be held by teleconference virtual meeting on Thursday, June 9th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the position of Pierre on Cree, 5 Tower Hill Road, North Reading, MA, Map 54, Parcel 13 for a special permit to raise chickens. Mr. On Cree, hello and welcome. Thank you for your patience. I'm my pleasure. Can you hear me okay? Can you see me? We can hear you and see you and tell us. I think we have a plan here too, Kathy, if you would pop that up. Um, showing the location of your proposed chicken coop. Yes, the uh, location is uh, um, about 60 feet from the road, about uh, 40 feet from my house. It is uh, enclosed on uh, three sides by uh, trees and brushes. And from the roadway to uh, the proposed site, I actually have my vegetable garden. So it is not... Uh, not visible from anywhere except from my backyard. Um, it's a space that is roughly uh, 15 by 50. And I'm looking to have um, a small coop with uh, 10 hens just to, uh, you know, plant the yard, lay some eggs and uh, feed my boys. All sounds good to me. Um, I appreciate that it's, uh, what's the sideline setback from the closest abutter? You said 18 feet there. I said, okay, I see it so approximately 20 feet off the sideline. That might, um, I think that is one thing they'll probably ask you if possible to inch that in just a, a foot or two. So it's- Yeah, absolutely, not a problem. Terrific. Um, do I'll we have any- Four feet. Any, any, any neighbors here, Kathy? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think so. All righty. Um, any questions or comments from our board? No. I think it's private. You gotta go through and get rid of shit. I'm sorry, can you repeat that please? I'm not sure that was someone here. Yeah. <laughs> I think that may have been background noise. Um, Bob, did you have any uh, questions or comments for the applicant? No, it seems pretty straightforward. Uh, and um, uh, I, I just out of curiosity, Mr. Have you had any conversations with your neighbors, or is it just is it because of where it's going to be situated? It is even going to be. I've actually uh, on my neighbors. It's not visible to any of my neighbors. And I've had uh, two of my neighbors come up to me just in the last couple of days saying, that's fantastic. Do I get fresh eggs? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that always is helpful. That works. Uh, it doesn't end <laughs> to the neighbor and uh, goes a long way. 
That's um, true. All right, I would. Would someone like to make a motion to close this? Bob, can I ask you to close this and make a motion? Oh, um, I'd like to make a motion to close the um, public hearing. I'll second. Bob Green, aye. All in favor? And Raguchi, aye. Robert Platt, aye. Bob, you, you, you great. all right. Um, and Bob, do you have Kathy's motions up in front of you? Uh, I've got a simple draft. Um, so, with regard to um, uh, Five Tower Hill. Yes. Uh, sorry. No. no I, I move move for the grant of a, a special permit for the purpose of um, building a coop to house. No more than four chickens. I think it was uh, said coop should not be located any closer than 20 feet to the front lot line or 10 feet to the side or rear lot line. And no should be made that roosters, um, there'll, there'll be no grant of variance. So roosters will not be allowed uh, within the, um, the development. Good. Thank you. And I, I just uh, wanted to make a an amendment to that motion, I believe you would ask for up to 10 hens. I'm they come They come in a pack of 10, so I was hoping for 10 hens. I'd like to Fair enough. up it to 10. Uh, sure, yes, noted. Thank you very much. Absolutely. No second. Um, all in favor? Vin. Bob Green, aye. Vin Raguchi, aye. Got a flat eye. All right. Good luck with your chickens. I hope. Uh, Thank you very much. Fresh eggs all around. Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's do it. So right. the okay. permit timeline this should be constructed. Oh, it'll be constructed in the. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, madam. Yeah, it's a special permit, Pierre. So um, Kathy will issue that. There's a 20-day appeal period for special permit. Okay. okay. And then um, Kathy, remind me. I forget if we are sending those out or they can pick up their copy of the permit from town hall. I send out a draft and then after the 20 day period, they can go into the town clerk and get a certified copy. Perfect. All right. You're on your way. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good, great evening. Thanks. You as well. Thank you. All right. I think we, let's if we have Next is 21 Concord, is that right? Okay, virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, June 9th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Loretta Martinez, 21 Concord Street, North Reading MA map 18 parcel 16 for a home occupation special permit to run her pet business per article 200-42 of the North Reading zoning bylaws. Martinez, are you here? Oh, there you are. Thanks for hanging in there. Oh, All right. Tell us a little bit about your business, please. Well, um, actually, I already had a permit when I lived at 63 Central Street at the five plus community. And unfortunately, uh, three of my family members passed away. So I now moved back to the family home on Concord Street with my sister. It's a two family. And I have a small um, dehydrated pet treats, dogs, bunnies, birds, um, horses. I use dehydrators and um, I do retail. I do wholesale and online. I'm, I do believe somebody came by the house today in the driveway, in fact. I'm 150 feet driveway from the, on Concord Street. My next door neighbors are the Coopers who have the hut topping business. I'm across the street from Bobcat, Boston, and I'm oh, next to okay. Ferguson's. <laughs> so I'm this little house set back in the woods. Um, and I just make them all my house. And I do not have heavy trucks coming in. I use, I go to FedEx or UPS and do uh, my shipping that way. So it wouldn't impact the street any more than what we already have. 
And it's just a, something I started when I wanted to retire. I needed to do something. And there's no good animal treats out there. <laughs> well, perfect. That sounds like you're doing just oh, the things that we, we want for a home occupancy. Um, uh, I'm also a member of the American Pet Products Association, which is a national organization that recognizes me as a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. I'm in line with Blue Buffalo, Purina. So I'm in that same organization with them. Mm -hmm. So they approve of my products because I wouldn't be able to get into that membership if they didn't. Okay. Uh, never had a recall, knock on wood. Um, and that's what I do in my spare time. Well, that's fantastic. The, um, has uh, since you've gone through this before, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you're you're aware of the standard conditions for, for a home occupancy special permit. Mm -hmm. um, no person employed other than the residential occupants, people mm -hmm. in the home, no right. more than 300 square feet allowed for the use. Right. Um, no display of goods um, or wares visible from the outside of your home no signage on the outside of your home i don't want people to know that we're even here we like our <laughs> quiet peaceful safe driveway and being in the woods perfect that's just what we want we don't want this to have any impact on your neighbors and it sounds like um it wouldn't so i would like to make a motion to grant a special permit Oh, I'm kind of jumping the gun here. I forget to survey my board members. I'm so excited to get to get to get to do this. Um, let me let me retract that and ask my board members if they have any comments or questions. <laughs> Finn, Bob. No questions for me. No questions, Madam Chair. All right. <laughs> That being said, um, I'd like to move to grant a home occupancy special permit to the applicant Loretta Martinez for pet treat making business at 21 Concord Street per Article 200-42 of the North Letting Zoning Bylaws with subject to the standard conditions, um, including no customers at the premises. Although if you have a neighbor come by and you want to hand them a treat, feel no, free. Uh, in fact, I use the post office box business so that I don't want people to know that there that is there and operating yeah. perfect I love that that's even better mm -hmm. and then and the special permits as all special permits um, for home locks are valid for four years mm -hmm. all right um, that's motion do I have a second second all right um, all in favor uh, Bob Rain aye Ben Ragucci aye Jennifer Platt, aye. All right, Ms. Martinez, you are approved. Again, with a special permit, there's a 20 day appeal period. Mm -hmm. And after that, you can pick up a copy of your special permit from the town clerk. And right. shoot me an email and let me know who has a dog or a bird or a rabbit. And I will make sure, Kathy knows, <laughs> I will oh. drop them off at town hall. Lovely, thank you very much. We appreciate that and good luck with your, with your ongoing I'm business. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You're yeah. most welcome. Have a good evening. And last but not least, I believe we have one more. And find the uh, thank you. Um for Elvira Road. There's a virtual public hearing will be held on June 9th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Jonathan News. For Elvira Road, North Reading, MA, Map 14, Parcel 51, for a variance from the side and front setbacks for an addition to expand the living room, as well as the master bedroom on the second floor, according to the requirements outlined in the dimensional and density regulations of the North Reading zoning bylaws. All right, do we have a Mr. Muse here with us this evening? I'm here, can you hear me? I can hear you all right last right. but not least would you tell us what you are hoping to do um well my wife now is fully remote so um we need to put an office space and i have three little girls who are growing up fast and we're running out of space so we need to make the house just a little bit bigger um 
So we're going to add a family room and a master bedroom above in the front of the house. And all right, so the black black area on the plan in front of us is where the proposed addition would be. Is that correct? Correct. And it looks like you're you're in between both Pine Ave and Elvira. Is it That's so correct. Elvira is the frontage you drive in that way? Yes. Okay. And what are so setbacks here, 25 per five, 25 from the front and 20 from the sides. So the side, you're really, you're, you're just touching that. And then it's really the front yard where we're seeing the, um, where you need the variance. And can you just, um, looks like your septics in the back. Correct. So is that why the addition needs to be on the front? Yeah. Okay. And Kathy, it looks like we have some elevations here. Would you scroll down to those for us? So the, is it that the, the gable section, is that what we're looking at? Yes, that'll be the that'll be the um, what's visible from Elvira Road. Yeah, so it's just bumping out the front, right. putting that gable. Right. It'll essentially look the same. Just you know, it'll be bumped out. Right. The. Um, It has, you know, we'll have uh, from looking at the plans, looks like no impact on the abutters in terms of the sides, very minimal. No, on the side, we're only asking for, we're asking for under four inches on the side. <laughs> so that's, I don't foresee that being a, an issue. Um, it's the frontage and you're just coming into your front yard. Um, Bob, then any concerns with that? So the only question really is, is that given the location of the septic in the rear and in order to expand the property for the purposes stated, the hardship really was that he had to build out the front. There's no, there was no other option available to you, Ms. Mr. Muse? Um, no, that's, that's what makes the most sense um, as far as what's existing to build onto the front end. And the, yes, the septic is in the back, so that's really not an option and we don't have the room on either side thank you ben? i have the same question as bob so that that's that's the only question i have yeah now that uh, from the layout of the lot and the location of the existing septic um I'm, Looking at one of the plans, it has, might've been the first one, Kathy, and it shows um, this isn't the plot plan. All right, so the, it shows approximate septic location in the back. And then there's also a box closer to the house. Is that the first, um, first tank for the septic? Looks like that's probably what that is. Can you see yes, that? Yes, that's the, yes, that's the tank. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, that, so that makes sense to me, given the, the property layout. And uh, do we have any comments from neighbors or any, I don't think we, any, anyone else still with us? <laughs> this is uh, Sophie Boyce and Nick Robertson. We are at six Elvira. Um, John, we wish you all the best of luck. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you thank so much. You. Thanks for, um, um, thanks for coming on this evening and sharing, sharing your support. That is always helpful. Um, and I'm just looking, we have, um, there's someone here, uh, Phil Healy, is that our, that's our recorder, right? Uh, oh yeah, that's our, right. That's all of us. 
Um, was there anything else on, on the file in this, Kathy? I don't think I saw anything. Any comments from anyone? Yeah, I don't see. I don't see anything from anything in the file from other neighbors or CPC. So, um, and we do have your one neighbor in butter in support. That's wonderful. <laughs> if all is, Jerry, any any comments from engineer from uh, your office? Oh, it all looks good to me. I don't, I don't have any issue with that. Uh, he'd only have to look at the the septic design. He's adding a he'd probably have to go to the health department and make sure that that's, that doesn't become an issue. Good point. Thank you, Jerry. Make sure it's adequate for what will now be a four bedroom. Okay. It'll still be a three bedroom. We're taking a bedroom away upstairs and we have just, we're not adding one. We're just changing the configuration. Mm -hmm. It'll still be three bedrooms. Okay. Oh, that works. Right. Great. Right. And at the, Mr. Muse, thank you for submitting uh, the plan drawings. A lot of times people come to us without this kind of um, preparation. So thank you for that. Yes. Well, and you're then, welcome. Thank you. So, you know, we send them away when they do that and make them come back. So <laughs> <laughs> this helps us all be more efficient. Um, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, second. Thank you, Bob. All in favor? Bob Brain, aye. Ben Raguchi, aye. Thank you, Jennifer Platt, aye. And um, Bob, can I ask you to make a motion on this? Uh, yes. Um, uh, I move to allow, um, pursuant to the petitioner, uh, Jonathan Muse, for Elvira Road, North Reading, map 14, parcel 51 for a variance from the side and front sets back in addition to expand the living room as well as a master bedroom on the second floor according to requirements outlined pursuant to uh, town dimensional and reg density regulations. I move to um, allow and grant um, what appears to be a 12 foot variance from the front lot line on the submitted plan for the setbacks and Nothing to exceed I, uh, the stated um, variance need for the um, for the uh, side setback, um, pursuant to again dimensional density regulations of North Reading zoning bylaws. I'll second. Yeah, and I would just um, like to add to that that's um, to be pursuant to the plan submitted. We'll just add that to the. Thank you. Final decision. Um, can, can I have you re-second? Second that amendment. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Bob. Bob Brain, aye. Ben Raguchi, aye. Jennifer Platt, aye. All right. Congratulations. You are approved. You have, um, again, the 20 day appeal period, and then you'll be able to pick up your variance. Um, you will want to record that so it's in the public records. Once you okay. Have... okay. All right. Thank Good you. luck with your project. Thank you so much. Okay. Our good luck. Pleasure. Thank you. Mr. Luck. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. All right, everyone. Great work yet again. So we're going to move the uh, minutes uh, to the next uh, next meeting. For approval. Um, oh, let's. Thanks for the reminder. I was, but let's see. You, I did, did read those. Um, I, let's see where are they? Sorry, point back up. I have no problem with the April minutes. And if you are, uh, but Vin, you weren't here. No. Yeah. So we will await to put those until Maria's here. Yep. And same thing for last month. I wasn't here. So um, again, when Maria's here, we will approve those. And that's all I got. Great. Oh, I wanted to um, 
uh, let you know that I found a way to put the materials that were going to be, or that were submitted for the hearings on our website. Woo! So I will mention that in the hearing notice at the bottom, if they want to view the materials, they can go on the website to look at it. That's fantastic, Kathy. I think that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, in case they can't make the meeting or in case they have questions. All right. And I just want to get review things ahead of time. That's fantastic. I okay. appreciate that. Okay. And that's it. All right. Well, how is everyone? Good? Good. Good. <laughs> Wrapping up the school year, Bob? Yes, very much so. It comes quick, but uh, then, then everything slows down. So. That's how it kind of just seems to go. Oh, Kathy, did everybody receive the uh, the comments that I have relative to the increases? Or uh, oh, also? did I send those out? Increases. I thought I sent them back fees. a little while ago. The fees, because we are. Oh. Uh, it's uh, it's very sparse. Where we're basically no. At some point, not even covering it, uh, our expenses. You, Kathy did circulate those, and do you need our? How can we assist? Do you need approval from the board on that, or just? Well, I just want uh, just for our information. Yeah, just basically for your information and. And so you want you know you're fully under and i think there is a uh if the board is is on board with that then all the better absolutely I'm just pulling this up so what's the next stage jerry they do, does it have to go to town or does it go to just selectmen no it doesn't go to select board it doesn't go to town it, it, it basically uh there's a, there's a law that was passed uh, quite a few years ago um and i basically have the right to to uh Propose the increases. I just need to make sure that I let everybody know, um, and let them know thirty days in advance, um, mm -hmm. and explain why. In this case, I don't think the I don't um, I don't think we've increased them. What is it, Kathy? Fifteen or twenty years? Probably, yeah. Yeah. My only question, Jerry, was is it, you know, and and you commented on it to start that you're not sure whether you're even recouping the cost to. Do we know that that's exactly what, you know, you, you should be taking what's actually the time that goes into uh, each of these things? Kathy could probably comment on that better than I. She's the one that basically is. Uh, uh, so the advertising for two weeks, and it may be because we have to put the virtual information on that makes it a little bit longer. Yeah. The average um, advertising for the two weeks is going at 165, 170, and we only charge 150 for the hearing. So we're going under a little bit each hearing. And so as I'm looking at this uh, memo you sent over, there's a base fee for you know, special permit variance, um, appeals, home op, and then on top of that, they'll pay for their advertising. Is that correct? I think that's fair reason being is because Kathy's time mm -hmm. is simply not being allotted in there. And we're basically paying out the Kathy's time on, um, on a constant basis. Mm -hmm. no, that, that makes sense. I mean, it's taking your time, Kathy's time. Um, and how do these fees compare to some of our abutting towns? Just out of curiosity. I did, I did go through that. I do have a somewhat of a performer that I did put together, um, but I could have Kathy circulate it to each and every one of you so you can basically review that. Terrific. No, I'd be uh, interested to see that. I'm just curious what our, what our neighbors are doing, um, but I think it makes perfect sense, Jerry, to be covering your costs and you know updating these on a somewhat regular basis every few years rather than every 15. Or so, so no, I'm, I'm, I totally support <laughs> support that. It's, it's um, um, we don't want this to be more of a burden on the the town. 
I mean, we we did the same thing, Jerry. With uh, I'm I'm chairman of the water board. We met last night, and we do it annually uh, for this reason. When when I first started, I was blown away at how inexpensive it was to do just about anything, and um, and now we're in line with just about everybody. Um, but we look at it on an annual basis and make the changes, you know, in accordance with, and, and sometimes it's technology changes and things. Yeah, we, um, with what I propose, pretty much in line with, uh, with our neighboring, plus a lot of other communities uh, outside of our neighboring towns as well. Um, we, had this, we had the same issue with our building permit fees. Yeah, mm -hmm. when I board, I was shocked when we, that we hadn't, we hadn't raised them in almost 20 years. So we basically uh, we went through that process as well. Yeah, so it, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure it'll, you'll get some comments from folks at the counter who um, are used to seeing nominal fees, but um, it, it, we need to be fiscally prudent. So appreciate you putting the effort there. So we have, um, I think we have five hearings for the next meeting. Um, all five might not go all the way through, but um, I will start charging in August, Jerry, or do we have to advertise prior? We have to let people know with no uh, 30 days prior. So I, I would say probably for August. Okay. Right. So does, does that mean there's going to be a run on meetings to beat the... <laughs> <laughs> well, I do know, you know the next few meetings are going to be, a couple of them are going to be very comprehensive. So. All right. Yeah, the um, Main Street will be. We'll see what they oh, yeah. see yeah. what they propose. It'll be interesting. Looking forward to hearing it. All right, guys. Um, love seeing you, but I know everyone has uh, stuff stuff to do. So do that. You, go for it. Thank you very much for so, coming tonight. Uh, as always, appreciate your. Your move, to, your move, move to close the meeting. Second. All in favor. I'm in. Bob, All right. Bob Green, aye. Aye. <laughs> Have All a right. good night. Have okay. a great good night, night everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Kathy. Bye.